Thinking about moving to Panama, but not sure how to handle shipping your belongings, your car, and even your artwork? Join us to uncover the essentials of customs and logistics with the experts. Welcome everyone, my name is Giovanna Bernal, I'm a Panama attorney with more than 15 years of experience and today I'm here with Pablo Arias, he is the founder of International Relocation Partner and here's with us today and especially on how to ship your goods when you want to move to Panama. Welcome Pablo. Hey, hello, Joanna. Nice to see you again. I see you everywhere. I see you on YouTube. I see you on all these networking <laughs> events. I'm so happy and excited to be here. Thank you, Pablo. Same here. I'm so happy to connect with you and have this meeting. Um, I really wanted our viewers to get to meet you because um, many of our clients want to know how to bring their goods, their households. Many of them are retirees from North America. And I know that you have a lot of experience on this area. So let's dive in. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and let's start. Um, so tell me, maybe you want to introduce the company. What do you do? Basically, how can you solve problems to expats coming to Panama? Okay, very briefly, because I don't want, I, I want to focus on providing more insight, but very, very briefly is I own an international shipping company. But I decided to design this company around helping expats move abroad. Our company is registered in Panama, Costa Rica, and United States. Uh, we have business and presence in five countries and employees in five countries. And basically, we start noticing that there is a group of people in the United States and Canada that is migrating to countries like Costa Rica and Panama or Costa Rica, Portugal. Um, and I wanted to design a product and a service that is specifically designed for this particular uh, customer who is looking to relocate to these countries. A lot of them are retirees, for example. So I designed the, everything to have, my contracts have big letters, so big fonts, because my customers, most of them are in their 60s. Uh, so big letters. I designed a process that over communicate things because a lot of people is overwhelmed. They do immigration, they're buying a house, they're bringing their pets, they're looking for schools for their kids. They're doing many things. And on top of that, they're doing shipping. So the, the people sometimes forget things. So we over communicate in a consultation call, in with emails, with WhatsApp groups, with a following following up process. We over communicate, communicate everything many, many times because we understood our customers are overwhelmed. So we started designing these things and we do many other things. How we operate is a bit, very different from other shipping companies. And we even consider ourselves a project management company that specializes in international moving services for expats. It's a long description, but that's just what we do. We can help people move from Ontario, Canada to Panama City or Boquete, Panama. We can handle from packing everything to unpacking in Boquete and help you set things up. And the range goes from A to C completely. Or sometimes we have a customer that says, hey, Paolo, can you just do customs clearance or can you just help me do one of the things in the entire project? That's great. Thank you, Pablo. Tell me something. Um, many of our clients, they ask us, like, we want to bring our personal items, our household goods. How can we bring them? How can you help them do that? Okay. This is a very common question. Yes, of course, you can bring your personal things to, into Panama. In fact, Panama incentivates the newcomer, the expats, if you have uh, your immigration process in place, you also are allowed to have an exoneration. So just to give you an idea, if you ship your things into Nicaragua or Costa Rica, you have to pay at least $2,000 on import taxes. Bring a container full of things, $2,000, and sometimes it's $10,000, depending on the value. Panama allows you, to ex you, allows you to bring your things without having to pay import taxes. But this is a trick. You need to know how to how, how to do this, and this is what we do. We we get in. We ask our customers, please book a consultation, so we can have at least thirty minutes, and we we walk them through the entire process from start to finish. Um, and basically, how we do this is we have a network of shipping companies worldwide that specializes in picking up the shipping, full packing services. So these are moving companies that also have the ability to do international shipping. So we connect with them and we say, we have this particular customer who is in Miami, Florida. Can you go 
pick up everything, pack everything, and ship it into Balboa Port or Manzanillo Port in Panama. When it gets into Manzanillo Port in Panama or Balboa Port, we move that container sometimes directly from port, directly into the customer's house uh, by filing customs ahead of time. Or sometimes we have to move them into a bonded warehouse, which is a customs facility that uh, we have to use depending if the government wants to do, the Panamanian government wants to do an inspection or, or, or not. So this is kind of like a brief description. There's a lot more to it and every customer is different. This is the thing is, it's so hard to give a general answer because there are customers that qualify for the acceleration. There's customers that do not qualify for the acceleration. There are customers that depending on your status, you want to get allowed one thing or another. Uh, and then also there are customers that are coming from Hawaii. That's $25,000 move, it's super expensive. There are other customers that are moving from Miami, Florida. It's a lot less expensive. So everything is a little bit different from everybody and it's tailored to the customer needs. That's very good to know. Um, another questions we get a lot is like how to bring a, a car, if it's, it's if it's worth to bring a car or not, an old car or a new car, is there, is there any mm -hmm. difference? It's, uh, let me put it this way. Every case is different, is different mm -hmm. like, like I just said, but there is an economic investment so you have to pay for this and on top of that you have to uh there is a time investment as well so it has to be worth it what i'm trying to say is let's say you want to bring i don't know a jeep you bring a jeep you get it down but that's going to take time to get it down then you file customs you send somebody from customs to make an inspection to to determine what's the real value and based on that real value you're paying for taxes Now, if you have your immigration ready, you get an import tax exoneration. So you get a discount. It's not 100%, but you get a discount on that. And that's all good. But the entire process could take another month at customs, three weeks. So in between all that, maybe you just bought a Jeep down here. So mm -hmm. it has to be worth it, right? It has to be worth it because a lot of the heating cost is, okay, I'm waiting for my Jeep. Then you're paying Uber, maybe you're renting a car, maybe you're, you know, you, there is another cost that you're not doing the numbers because, yeah, you're not adding all the times you're having to pay for Uber or you're not adding all the time, you know, every day that, you, that you're paying for a rental car. Uh, so I will say if it's a vehicle that you must have in Panama, it's worth it for you. Or maybe it's a vehicle that was you bought it very inexpensively in the United States. So it's worth it for you to wait. Then by mm -hmm. all means. But... If it's something that you go and gonna go buy one in Florida and then you're doing all this and then by the time you get you get it down here it's gonna be a month and a half and then maybe there is a lot of things that you're not adding on this expense time inconvenience I would just not you know and I be, I do this for a living so I'd rather give you an advice that do not bring business but give you good advice so I would say maybe not we just have to do the math on every exactly. case there are some vehicles that we can value for less in Panama. Maybe there is not, you know, in the local market, you, you can justify a lower value. There's other vehicles that are considered work vehicles that pay even less taxes uh, in Panama. So you have a pickup truck, maybe that, maybe a minivan for, you know, a panel minivan for work, then the bracket for taxes is less. So, so we can look into that. We can look into each specific vehicle. And with that, you can make a decision. But mm -hmm. uh, you have to keep in mind that there is many other things that, are going to cost and it's going to cost time and it's going to cost money. And how, how do they can get the link for the consultation on your website? We will do it on the description, but just wondering. It's very simple. It's international relocation partner, just like you see on the screen, uh, dot com. All right. Um, All right. And basically it's got a little click option where you can click the destination country will be Panama. You okay. pick the time and date. Uh, we sometimes have, uh, you know, Uh, we're busy sometimes two or three days in advance. There are some seasons during the year that people have to book a week or two in advance. Uh, so we, we're busy, we're busy. But the only way that we are able to properly service everyone is by doing a, by blocking 30 minutes on our agenda. Otherwise, what happened is the traditional shipping company, the traditional uh, other businesses, You get an email, they call you, they, they get many emails, they call everybody and they don't get the information organized. So they may lose something. So there is, if, if I get 
if I don't have all the data, all the facts, and I give you a consultation, I won't, I won't be giving you a good service. Um, very simple. Hey, Paolo, I have a car. Can you help me ship this car to Panama? Yes, mm -hmm. I can. What's the model? What's so the traditional way, way will be just send me the information of the vehicle, I'll give you a quote, right? right. Uh, right. And that could work 90% of the times for many companies. But mm -hmm. what if you did not share with me that you were going to put a few boxes inside of the car? And uh, not knowing that, it will mean that, yes, let's go. We go into operation, we ship the part, we get it into Alboa port, we move it into a you know, bonded warehouse in Panama City. And um, the inspector comes, they look at a few boxes, they're not in the bill of landing, they're not in the manifest, nobody told anything about it. Now you have a fine, now you have all kinds of problems trying to get this, these boxes and this car release that could cost you thousands of dollars. So having a proper consultation and booking the time for at least 30 minutes to explain everything you need to do could save you a lot of time, headache and money. And, and I feel, you know, some of the other companies, they don't really go through this process. They just quote. And if they somebody, OK, it's OK, but they don't get the details. And we go more into we want to know our customers, where you're coming from, why you're moving to Panama. And we get all this insight. And we, I get excited about people moving into our countries. I just really feel like it's amazing how you know, Latin America is attracting so much, uh, so many people that are successful. And I learn from them in our consultations. So it's something that I like to do. And we get all this information and make friends with all of them. Um, and, and it allows you to give a better service because taking the time to learn of what the customer really needs and wants allow us to give better advice. Excellent. Another question we get is like, how do you handle treasure or luxury things? Like for example, art, boats, or fishing equipment how, how is that different from bringing personal goods okay as long as things are used if they're used let's say you have your fishing gear or your power tools a lot of americans they have this garage with all these different tools you know a man american guy you know strong i mm -hmm. i see it all the time it looks like a you know industrial factory you know it looks like a, a carpentry I, i don't know Uh, as long as it's used, if it's used, if it was in your house, is your used house of goods, it's okay. Including this fishing gear. Um, in, as if it's used, if you go and buy brand new things, you have this new, you know, everything new, it's gonna smell new, you have, it's gonna have labels, it's gonna be wrapped in the brand new package, then it's a different law, it's a different process, it will not follow in under household also goods law will have to quality you know do a uh, qualify each individual item and pay import taxes on each thing i'm not saying it's impossible we've done it before if it's you can bring brand new things but it's just a different process and what will make more sense is just take it for you know just take your fishing gear for you know a weekend a weekend fi weekend fish uh, fishing uh, weekend whatever you go just go and use it for a couple of days and uh, that will make that those items qualify for the import tax generation and save you some money uh, now for fine art uh, there are uh, different things that we need to think of you have you have to have a special insurance you have to have uh, special packing so the insurance it's able to protect those items uh, so in those cases of course we need to know that you have fine art so you have you have fine art you tell us i have these pieces then we we hire our agent at the at origin that has the ability to do fine art packing and not every agent has this we have a network of agents worldwide in the united states is around 300 plus agents there is About 20% of those agents will do fine art packing. They will bring, you know, the wood, wood crating, bubble wrap, everything, additional protection for everything. And now this item could be insured properly. Otherwise, insurance is not going to cover anything. If you just wrap it, you know, yourself, it's just not, it's not going to cover. And you have to also provide certificates of what this, this is worth for insurance. A lot of people would say, well, this is worth $100,000, but there is not a tangible document or anything that actually tells me this is worth $100,000. Now, if something is to happen to this item, 
when he gets to Panama. Uh, you know, because let's be real, things could happen. There is sometimes a million miles away. There's, a, you know, other uh, different things, forklifts, containers, ports. So if something is to happen in, the, in this transition, uh, then you're not covered because you are not able to prove that this is what you're insuring this item for. Uh, so we recommend our, our customers to get an appraisal before they ship. So they have something to prove what it's worth. And these insurance companies will demand that to insure this item if it's really worth thousands of dollars. And as far as boats, uh, Panama is very friendly with boats. You know, uh, you, you you know this, you know this, you know, uh, this is something that I don't register boats in Panama, uh, mm-hmm. but there is a lot of benefits. It's, I would say, I think it's the second best country in the world for registering a, a, a boat, second or third or first, is it the top three? Uh, but then for that question, I'll let you answer, you know, people who's going to know, Hey, how can I bring my boat? You can seal your boat down to Panama. Mm-hmm. That's one way. That's the most, uh, I'll say inexpensive way to do it. Or mm-hmm. if you need a special assistance, we can coordinate with an agent that is specialized in boats. And if okay. the boat is on a trailer, it's one process, uh, depending on what, where in the U S is this, is it in California or is it in, uh, uh, in New York, both oceans have different service se- services options. If it's in a trailer, it's one way. But if it's at 30 feet, 40 feet, you know, and it needs this additional handling, uh, we use something that is called a flat rack, which is an open container. It's just like a like a platform. Uh, we need cranes. We need a special, you know, as it's a special handling process. It could be done. It's expensive, by the way. It could be. Large boat could be twenty, thirty-five thousand dollars to move from the states to to Panama on a flat rack. Uh, you know, by when you use, you have to. We have to use a crane. You have to use. There's many things that we did that, that we have to coordinate. It's a big project. We do it, uh, uh, but it's also expensive. Oh, and then, wow. if it's in a trailer, there is more options and it's a lot more affordable. Wow. This is very interesting. Uh, one more question. People might want to know if you help them bring their items, their furniture, the personal things to Panama. Do you help them door to door or is it until the port, like Manzanillo, for example? How does it work? 99% of the cases, we do a door to door service. Oh, wow. Mm, like almost every single time, it's rare. And this is mainly because our specialty is getting to know we go into every market like we are in costa rica we go in and then and then we went to panama and then we're now doing mexico we go into each market and we want to learn and master the destination part meaning customs processes regulations requirements Mm -hmm. so this is what make us shine the destination part so if i only offer okay i do the shipping and then you handle the destination part you know i'm not how good I, I'm just like any other company. So we basically specialize on ourselves into the last part, which is getting the container from port, moving it, do filing customs clearance and taking it to your, to your house. And at your house, if you need this additional help, we can provide helping you with unpacking boxes. And that usually takes another day, sometimes two or three days, depending on the size of the container. Of course, it's more expensive. Okay. Okay. So it depends. Or it really depends. Okay. Sounds yeah. that's good. In most cases, in most cases, we do. Uh, it's it's rare we will have a customer that we don't do a, a, a door to door. And the final unpacking boxes is mm-hmm. also depending on the customer. A lot of customers would pay for everything, and they say, "Well, I don't have a house yet. Can you take it into a storage unit?" So in that case, they don't need the unpacking of the boxes. Or some mm-hmm. customers say, "I do it myself. I, I'm better." Like. I, I just want to do it with my own time. It, it, it could take <laughs> three weeks to do it, unpack everything. But that, that's what they prefer. And you can do this with any client like United States, Canada, Europe, right? And- I'll say 90% mm-hmm. of the cases. Uh, there are mm-hmm. some destinations out there, some countries that are tougher, difficult to deal with, uh, that we can look into them. But mm-hmm. their own rules and regulations makes it super hard to export out of those countries uh so it just depends and these laws from country to country they change uh i would say our primary market is from united states canada to latin america and we also do spain and portugal or or europe uh 
on, on a regular basis. But uh, I'll say some some destinations or countries in Africa, Asia, uh, you know, some of these third world countries. It's just more complex, and, and some of the some of them, uh, it's just good. it could it, it could be that we could do it, but it just become too expensive. So it's not it's not worth it. Um, so yeah, I'll say ninety plus of percent of the cases we can we can help. Awesome, awesome. This is great. This is great, Pablo. Thank you so much for this information, and definitely we're going to put your contact details in our description, also the link so they can book a, a call with you to learn more about about your services and how to, you can help them. This has been very invaluable and very useful for us and our viewers. You, know, you have a lot of years of experience and even yourself, you have done this for so many years. Thank you for this. Um, we invite up subscribers and our watchers to, to follow us, to click and like this video, click on the link below in, in order to contact Pablo. And if you need also consultation for legal, the visas and the legal services in Panama, our link for a Zoom call is on the description. And this is it. Thank you, Pablo, for this. Um, Thank you so much. See you soon, Panama. <laughs> See Take you. care. Bye-bye. <laughs>